1942 was the year Spectrum Studios swept the Golden Mike Awards. Mr. S's infamous after party was going to be one for the books, for as rumor had it, Mr. S was to make a midnight appearance after his two-year absence. Paparazzi was everywhere. As for the night, it seemed to be filled with a million stars in the sky and on the ground. It was an A-list of who's who. White seemed to be the trend of color, and strapless gowns reigned supreme. And it appeared everyone had come dressed to impress. The coat check was overflowing with satin, fox, mink, ermine, only to be outdone by Mr. S's traditional champagne tower of his own label. And champagne there was, did I mention? There was champagne. <laughs> the white glove staff stood like soldiers, awaiting any and all requests. The famous Chef Montblay had been flown in from Paris to prepare a feast fit for a king. And for a queen. Yet, Mr. S's seat was mysteriously vacant. A no-show M.I.A. Quick Q. Benny, the band leader. All right, gentlemen, time to slay some sounds and let's hit all sixes on my count. And a one, two, three, wah! I see 360 days out of the year, geez. Even at my father's party, I'm working. I should have gone into mime. Good evening, ladies and gents. Who's ready to get their kicks on Route 66? <laughs> hit it, Benny. As the clock neared 12, there was something in the air. Quick, Jimmy, the original bellhop, go up the staircase, down the hall, find Mr. S, creep down the black stairwell, into the library. All right, all right, take it down a notch. Everybody just cool your jets. I'm Detective Duncan, and this here is my junior gumshoe jazz tone. It appears your host was iced in the study, and the whole lot of your suspects. This entire crib is surrounded by the black and white, so unless you want to spend the night in the can, I'd kibosh that idea of scramming right out of the old coconut. Dames first, then the suits. You get your one amici, so have at it. Call your legal beagle, mouthpiece, or your mom. After that, you are under my jurisdiction. One by one, you will be given the third degree, grilled, and put through the ringer, where you will spill the beans, cry like a baby, and sing like a canary. <laughs> What do you gotta do to get a cup of joe around this joint? Okay, people, people, while well, Detective Duncan grills everyone, I, Junior Detective Zervant Jastone, am going to use my telepathy and be the eager beaver that makes me solve crimes faster than anyone. I am going room to room before the evidence gets hello cold. My secret weapon is my sidekick, Dr. Shortstop, my genius monkey. I may be 13, but I am not naive at all. And no Duncan is frustrated I am here, and he thinks I have no clue. But wait until I solve this crime before he does. I think I will ask Debbie to come help us out. See? Us youngsters see things in a much clearer light. We don't overthink it or talk it to death. We just go and, hello, look. Oh, and the fact I can remind makes my job so much easier. As a matter of fact, I have already had visions coming. And those are going to lead me straight to the truth. Here it comes, Jaston, Shortstop, and Debbie! Every man for himself. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S.
contest. It was for the lead in a big new picture, My Girl Friday for Spectrum Studios. So I fill out the application with all my skills. They wanted a real legit looking actress to play the girl Friday. You know what I'm talking about, who have real typing, dictation, the whole skill show. Let me get this straight, kid. If you got your big break, then why are you still working as a secretary for Mr. S? Well, the picture got shelved, and Mr. S had the studio, gave me a tiny flat in the valley, and they even hired me to be his personal secretary. You know, until the picture gets made. I see. Look, I hate to break it to you, toots, but it looks like you got played, scammed, given a bum rap. But welcome to Hollywood. Your lousy opinion, Mr. Duncan, but I think it's a bunch of floy floy. Stardom is my future. It's in my middle name. Literally, Destiny. Well, if you need it, your destiny is sitting on the shelf over there gathering dust. One last question. How often do you physically see Mr. S, mug to mug? You know, for somebody who is a flat foot for a living, you think you'd have a lot more smarts. No one has seen Mr. S for years. He uses a squawk box, telegrams, messenger, or he rings you up. Oh, and this will flip your wig. He also has his own underground tunnel that leads to every corner of this studio. <laughs> wow, uh, nice tip. That'll be all for now, Sarah. Achoo! Allergies? No, only the people I don't like. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. Well, hello, I'm Marvin Williams. Oh, Williams, I'm Mr. S's personal cyber Calvin, or mailman. I, too, have been pounding this pavement for seven years, one. Or now, I'm the postmaster for all of these swanky people around these parts who are loaded with heavy sugar. Get it? It's swell, where everyone knows your man or name. I do time some, or sometimes deliver the wrong mail to the wrong peeps. But every once in a blue moon, I am on the beam, and it gets to the right dress at, or address. The hardest part is resealing those darn envelopes. Heh, <laughs> kidding. That's a felony. You're still in your uniform at a black tie ritzy event. Why is that? My root and tune root was O-V-E-R. I figured I'd go cut the red check and blow off some steam. And bingo, here I am. What a humdinger of a party. Are you a dancer? Um, no. Where were you when the lights went out, Twinkle Toes? I was off to see my fellow bowling league mate Harry, the groundskeeper here. We're both on the same team, the pinstripe suitors. Heh, <laughs> get it? Okay, I heard a loud noise and then a scream. I thought it was the pool man, and I rose or froze. All right, you wore me down. You win. I thought maybe it was cuss. I forgot to deliver the mail to the right dress ad or address. It could happen to anyone. No further questions. You betcha, Detective Duncan. Please be advised. I am here to serve and to help or help because I am Marvin the Mailman. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. I am Chadwell Crumpets. I met Mr. S when he hired me on the spot. He was amazed at my skills, and trust me, I will work him to get more power and more money. Once all of his famous friends start trying to steal me as their mixologist, you watch him give me what I want. Oh, I have signature drinks that no one has. The Cliffs of Dover is a huge hit, but I have flaming, glitter, dry ice, and my list goes on and on and on. Yes, I am that good. If I do say so myself, which I do frequently, I will start my own brand with Mr. S. But he has been MIA, but I know he will love the idea. I mean, who wouldn't? It's more. Where were you when the lights went out? Behind the bar, making my 50th Cliffs of Dover cocktail. No further questions. Well then, how about a Cliffs of Dover, Detective Duncan? I'm on the clock. Give it to the monkey. 
will do. Oh, short staff. Guess what? Another Cliffs of Dover from Detective Duncan. And then you're cut off. <laughs> For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. Jimmy, the original bellhop, the most loyal, longest employee to Mr. S. I came with the house. I'm up for a big promotion. If that whippersnapper Sarah would fly the coop, Mr. S loves me. How long have you been up for this promotion, sir? Sir? Uh, help, Jimmy's dead. <sighs> huh? Keep your voice down, Jeepers. You could wake the dead. Sorry, sir, but I thought you were... Son, you ever served? No, sir. Fourth Division, Third Battalion, Company C, Battery K, Foxhold, Nighthawk. <laughs> wow, you, you must have seen a lot of action. Nope, nothing. How is that possible? Nearsighted, farsighted, stigma, two lazy eyes. But my hearing is off the charts. <coughs> How so? What? Hey? What does your job entail? The boss of all luggage. There are a hundred rooms. How do you know if you're putting them in the right one? I don't. I can't see. Okay. No further questions. What? Huh? Speak up, son. Oh, who moved the door? Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. You've locked me in yet another room. By accident. <gasps> Again. Hell. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. Debbie S., the only famous granddaughter of Mr. S. <sighs> I mean, what kind of detective are you anyway? I'm the only kid at this party. Ugh, give me a sip. My nerves are shot. There's no smoking. Huh, says you. Ugh, I'm so bored. Do something now. Do another trick or shoot something. Now listen here, young lady. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. Are you done? Maybe, but probably not. Well, that's too bad, because Junior Jazzstone wanted you and his pet monkey to go on a scavenger hunt and look for clues. I want to go! I want to go! I want to go now! What's the magic word? Abacadabra? No. Shazam? No. Help! Please don't hit me again! I'm just an innocent child! What? Why you little spoiled- Unlock the store at once. Unlock? Unlock the store! You heard him, unlock that door! What's going on in there? The door shouldn't even be locked in the first place. Look. Are you okay, little girl? Everything is fine. Just see that Debbie S is taken on the scavenger hunt with Jazzstone is monkey. Oh, and Mr. Detective? The magic word was please. Oh. And one last thing, I locked the door. La, 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 la. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. Draco, Draco, Draco. The I'm an entertainer. I perform all over the world. I sell out every venue. Okay, I received telegram from mailman Marvin with large suitcase of clams. I am to perform at this big cheese this annual party. I don't know from nothing, but I knew it was pennies from heaven. It is my passion and I accept it. Were you always in the entertainment business? No. Not always. When I was young, I was involved in some shady things. 
Like what? I really don't know how this shakes down to Mr. S and to nice horrific events. But I was involved in Transylvanian Secret Service. But I cut all ties a long, long time ago. Were you aware that Mr. S has ties to Carpathia? I know nothing! I have never even met Mr. S. Yes, but this is looking like some double-crossing revenge scheme. All I want to do is entertain and make people happy! That all was a lifetime ago. Am I in danger? Don't worry, we'll put round-the-clock security on you. Also, where were you when the lights went out? The ballroom. My torches were still lit. Ask anyone. No further questions. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. Audrey, I'm an actress at Spectrum Studios. Why? Is that a crime? Look, one of Mr. S's cronies spotted me at a soda joint. They asked me if I would want to do a screen test. I've only spoken to Mr. S on the telephone. The rest is history. So, you were not romantically involved with Mr. S? Holy moly, for a P.I., you just don't clue in. I told you, I never met him, period. Aren't you seeing Monkey Jones as well? Is this interrogation about my dating life? Or what happened here tonight? I can date and see who I wish. Plus, we have the same goals. He is one ritzy guy who takes me to swanky joints and spoils me rotten. So... What about Michael, Rome, and Thomas? Aren't you two an item as well? It seems like you only date people who can help you. <gasps> Why, detective? Are you jealous? Get in line. Where were you when the lights went out? I was outside with Monkey Jones. Are we done? Because you, I like watching paint dry. No further questions. Enjoy the rest of your night. Oh, you can count on it, period. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. Well, Dick, I am the one and only Monkey Jones. Don't flip your wig, but you are chewing the fat with Tarzan. Mr. S and I became thick as thieves after he hired me. We were known to cut loose with some of the locals in Africa. But don't get me wrong, Mr. S is one hard-boiled character, especially when there is some high-stakes side actions to be had. The Congo Mafia controls the rarest diamond mines in the world. And we had to hightail it out of there. I mean, I escaped with only my loincloth. Look, I'm no angel, dick. I've made a lot of cabbage, and it wasn't from swinging on vines rescuing Jane either. But no charges were ever filed. What do you do now, monkey? Well, I entertain with Frank Sinatra every now and again. I even performed with Drago. I also moonlight as a closet organizer for the very elite. Monkey, your career seems to have gone downhill in the last few years. How dare you! Where were you when the lights went out? Uh, I was taking a stroll on the grounds of this estate with the stunning starlet, Miss Audrey, and... What were you two discussing? Oh, poor Dickie. You really are a drip. I am Monkey Jones. We were monkeying around, naturally. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. Detective, I am Randall Norwell. I applied for the groundskeeper consultant, and it was shut down. So I needed to scratch my side business. Pedal, poppy, uh, penalty bathtub gin. <laughs> so, I accepted the pool boy position on, with, with one condition, that my title would be aquatic consultant. <laughs> In light of the fact that I am terrified of bodies of water larger than a puddle, I shower. Where were you when the lights went out? I was attracting myself from the rolled up pool cover. Didn't you hear the scream? Colonel! Uh, I thought that was me. Have you been drinking? <laughs> Not that I recall, Commander. 
Is there someone who could verify your pool escapades? It's possible that Harry the groundskeeper heard the commotion. <clears throat> your Excellency! <laughs> no further questions, Esther Williams. <laughs> For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. Well, I reckon we go a long way back. We together made the Western movies the greatest all-American picture show. <laughs> Those early days were the best dong gone days ever. Mr. S made millions, and that became a household name. Cowgirls call me the Hugh. Mr. S has been MIA the last couple of years, and the people that run the Everyday Studios are trying to push the Westerns out. Westerns will never go out of style. I mean, the sci-fi is fine, but there is room for all of us. I helped make this studio, and by God, I can take it down too. To me, that sounds like a threat. It ain't no threat, son. But he is not the only game in town. How do you see this ending? Make all kinds of pictures, and I want to face to face with Mr. S. We go back to the very beginning. We owe it to each other. Where were you when the lights went out? Like any good cowboy, at the bar. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. I have been Mr. S's best for years. As you can see, I have good tongue. He thinks it's funny, and I'm a good fun. He says things to me like, Oh, come on, it's a tongue and cheek. When he is called down for dinner, he thinks it's a hoot by saying, Speak English? Cut out your tongue? You know what happened to my tongue? And the mobsters will get to make a drink! And yet, he always invites the mobster monkeys to every gathering. But he pays me very well. And he says they'll find me another tongue. It's like brothers who tease each other, but he does all the teasing and he has a tongue. Chef, where were you when the lights went out? Where are you? are cricket! Where are you at? No further questions. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. My name is Harry. I am the groundskeeper. I take my job very serious. My landscaping has been featured in top magazines. We must work day and night due to all the parties that are given here. It's a never-ending job. Let's face it, most Hollywood types are spoiled and lazy and leave their dress everywhere. The latest is someone has been sneaking in here at night and letting their dogs do their business everywhere. When was the last time you actually saw Mr. S? About two years ago. He was ill and doesn't allow anyone up in his wing. Which I understand. I'm a loner too. Why do you carry around those huge shears everywhere you go? The grounds have to be perfect. Not one leaf out of place ever. Well, frankly it just looks creepy. Then don't look at it! Good point. No further questions. Good. I gotta go smoke. <coughs> For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. Michael Woman Thomas. My relationship with Mr. S was a working one. We have made many films, and we're about to start another one, but he won't call me back. What do you think that is? At first, I thought Mr. S also had a thing for his star, Audrey, but Audrey haven't seen him either, or that Monkey Stones have offered up all the dough for my film, but Monkey has one catch. Oh, there always is. Go on. He wants Audrey to star in it. I'm confused. I thought you were in love with this tomato. Face it, he is heaven sent but only to a person who could help her get ahead. So you feel that Audrey might be playing all of you? Look, Audrey's not wife for this part. Sarah's perfect. I just got here by minutes before the blackout, but long enough to see Audrey with Monkey. It's over for Audrey and for Monkey. I'll find the money another way. 
Look, Michael Rump- Can I call you Mike? Mike, tonight's probably not the best time to be throwing around these accusations. Otherwise, I have no further questions for you, and have a good night. For the record, please state your name and your relationship with Mr. S. My friends all call me Dave Zin. For the record, I need your legal name. Dave Zin. Okay, we got ourselves a wise guy. What's your relationship with Mr. S? He's my relation stipple. I mean, I don't have the goods on him yet, but I get keepers all over this town. Plus, he dated my ma once. It was when he was on location in my hometown Lookbook, Texas. Mr. S was shooting a western with Houston the Urban Cowboy. Mr. S had a steak dinner with my ma. Well, she served him his steak dinner at the diner's counter and after peach cobbler he offered her a small role in the western picture. It all happened during the rodeo scene. God rest my poor ma. <laughs> you see, to make ends meet my mama was a part-time rodeo clown. Oh no, was she killed? What kind of twisted question is that? How dare you ask me that? My ma is a saint. Ma was born with two left feet, and with the extra large clown shoes that had her wearing, she kept walking in circles around and around and around and around she went. Well, I got Houston's horse so dizzy, passed out and broke the cowboy star's leg. Mr. S fired my mama in the rodeo clown legion, blackballed her, and made her turn in her beloved clown shoes for laugh. Dave Xander, it sounds like you have a lot of motive to do harm to Mr. S. Ingesto, could you help your elder understand that Mr. S needs to be alive to see my master of all time payback plan? When the lights went out, I was outside with my dogs. What kind of master plan could a dog walker possibly have? First off, I'm a dog savant. The Spectrum Studio people saw my hugely popular dog show at the farmer's market and they offered me a weekly TV show with a three year contract. I just met with Studios Press and I'm booked on the Jack Parr show. I'm going to get my mama's clown shoes back and get the clown legion to reinstate her clown status. I then am putting her on my show. But detective, you are correct. I do walk my dogs every night, a secret opening to Mr. S's lawn. Let's just say that after they're done, it's a man for you. Yes, he is a she. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Mr. S's only daughter, Alexandra. Yes, he actually has two children. The reason you all have never heard of me is because my mother and father agreed before I was born to allow me to live a normal life away from the spotlight. So I grew up back east with my aunt. But enough about me. Tonight is about you. As this annual Golden Mike after party served as the perfect disguise for our sting operation. <laughs> Leaving so soon. <laughs> There's no way out. This estate is crawling with cops, so cool your jets, grab a drink. Trust me, you're going to need it. Hmm, where was I? Oh yes, when my father's health began to take a turn for the worse, he asked me to step in and act on his behalf. I am thrilled to announce my father is alive and looking at a full recovery. Enough! You are unbelievable. My father has had to endure the ugly truth about so many of you. Your dishonesty, unloyal, and most unscrupulous actions. The very same people my father gave his complete trust to. But tonight, all that ends. Detective Duncan and I have completed our two-year investigation. And after we are through here, many of you will be... Checking coats, waiting tables, parking cars, or behind bars. Buckle up your seatbelts. It's going to be a very bumpy ride. <laughs> I just had the weirdest dream. Wow. I hope you've enjoyed the Golden Mike. On behalf of our cast and crew, happy holidays. Let's go.
Yeah.